Professor Dame Nancy Rothwell was in Newcland recently for the Christmas lecture on stroke and also to talk about her research on the new discoveries in brain disease. Prior to the lecture, she spoke to us about her visit to Newcland and also about the Northwest having the highest rate of stroke in the UK. This afternoon I'm giving the Society of Biology Regional Christmas Lecture and it's called A Stroke of Bad Luck and it's really describing what happens when somebody has a stroke, uh, the events that occur after a stroke, uh, but then it's really going on to explain our research and what we've discovered about some of the molecules that are produced in the brain after a stroke that cause the damage and how we're trying to test new drugs to stop that molecule from working and therefore perhaps to reduce the damage. This is my second visit to UCLan. It was a long time ago. I came and uh, uh, gave a public lecture um, a long time ago um, to students largely here. But actually, I've been to this site many times before um, because my father was a lecturer at the Harris Institute before it became Preston Polytechnic and then UCLan. Yeah, the Northwest has one of the highest rates uh, of stroke in the country, and in fact, Manchester, where I work, is amongst the highest. Um, and there is a strong correlation across the UK between levels of education, um, economics, uh, and social status, and stroke. So actually, it isn't geography, it's socioeconomic status. If you look in Manchester, for example, large regions have uh, strokes that are twice the rate of the rest of the country and a life expectancy that's 10 years less than the South East. But there are parts of Manchester where, that are very affluent, that are right next to the poor areas, and the rates are the same as the South East. So it is an issue about education, about diet, about exercise, smoking, alcohol intake, whether or not you go to your GP or not. Many would argue that you have to define stress as the response of the individual rather than the nature of the stress. But what we do know is from very big studies called the Whitehall studies of civil servants in Whitehall that if you look at all the risk factors and indeed the incidence of heart attacks and strokes, somewhat to everyone's surprise, it was highest in the more junior workers. And the most senior workers who had the most stressful jobs and worked the longest hours had the lowest indicators and events uh, such as a stroke. And the conclusion from that was that it wasn't so much how hard you work, but whether you were in control of what you do. But it hasn't been really investigated in more detail than that. It is very difficult to control stress because for some people um, it's hugely enjoyable and highly beneficial, um, as anybody will tell you who goes rock climbing or <laughs> whitewater rafting. Um, I think uh, the issue is where it's having a detrimental effect on your health, then at the moment I would say the best advice is to avoid what's causing you the stress. Perseverance. <laughs> it is quite hard work, but I think an important um, piece of advice is, is look for the unexpected. We tend to often find results that don't fit with what we expect and so we ignore them. And they're often the most interesting and exciting ones. And, and in fact, I got into the field of stroke by luck. Um, I, I was working on obesity and, and the link was not, as you would expect, the relationship between obesity and stroke. It was, it was um, much more um, complicated than that. Um, but so often we ignore the things that we're not expecting. Young children ask different questions to older ones. The older ones often ask, what's it like being a woman in science and being a woman in a senior position? Um, the young kids want to know who I've met who's famous. And they're generally most impressed by Alex Ferguson. So.